Hi everyone, it's Alistair Clark here from StuntLives.com. I've got a brand new video for you this week with a guy called Andy Gill. If you like car chases, then this is one guy that you need to pay attention to because he has done some of the best stunts in film you'll ever see. Uh, and he's you know he's well known for doing the Fast and the Furious films, uh, Bad Boys Two. Um, I I could just carry on with because as you know I love my car chases. I will let the video and the interview do the talking. So I hope you enjoy it, and I will catch up with you later. Take care. Speak to you later. Hey, Andy. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm all right, thank you, my friend. And yourself? I'm doing good. Excellent. Getting a bit of rest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounded pretty hectic shoot that you were, you were going on. Oh, my God. It's been a hectic one, yeah. Right. It's, uh, it was behind schedule, you know, everything else pushed to try to get it done. And mm -hmm. we, had to, we had to only prep the very first sequence to beat the ice. Mm -hmm. and so we never got to prep the rest of the show. Right. So by the time we got the ice and stuff done, we were so far behind on everything else. So it's been, mm -hmm. you know, running down the whole time. So. Right. Okay. So when, when do you actually start shooting again then? Uh, tomorrow. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, we only have two days left. We're done. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Done. Yeah, another one uh, in, the, in the books. History right. books, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so is this one of the longest shoots you've done, do you think? Uh, no, it's pretty average. Um, seven to eight months uh, for most of these. Uh, I did one, actually, my longest was in uh, actually a Bollywood movie. It was nine months. Mm -hmm. Nine uh, months? nine months in in india right okay yeah, that, long one that must have been ex extremely hot then as well oh yeah <laughs> hot uh, it was an experience you know um mm. it's a life experience over there. you ever been to india um i haven't no 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 my my mum was actually born there during the british empire yeah. so uh okay. yeah but right. i'd love to go there definitely yeah, I was in Mumbai, and it's uh, it is a life experience. It's something a place like you'll never see anywhere else in the world. Yeah, yeah. a lot of poverty, mm. but the people, mm. the people are great. Yeah, it's you just got to be there. It's amazing. Oh, definitely, it's amazing. definitely. Yeah. Well, the um, I've been speaking to. Uh, do you know Andy Armstrong? Yeah, I know Andy. Yeah, yeah. So I spoke to him, and he was saying about exactly the same as you. You know, India, they're lovely, lovely people, but yeah. it's just incredibly hot. And it's just... Oh, yeah. It is heavy, heavy air. It's hard to breathe. Mm. Um, yeah. And, but the, the, <laughs> the people are just incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, they get stuff done that it's unlike any place you've ever been in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a... We had a train sequence, mm. and you've you've seen the trains over there, all the pictures of people hanging off them. Oh, yeah. Well, we were gonna we were gonna do a sequence where uh, our our um, hero runs down the side of a train because he's a super hero guy, mm. and so we did the actual running on the actual train with wire work and everything else while it was on the tracks. But then when we had the actor, we did it with stunt doubles. Mm. Uh, we had to have the trains in a stage where we could control it. Mm. So I told him, okay, I assumed we were going to just rent mm -hmm. a couple of the real trains and we're going to bring to the stage. And so they're saying, you yeah, know, we, we got this, the trains coming and everything else. And I said, well, I need to rehearse with them. I need them here by this date. Mm -hmm. They said, they'll be there. They'll be there. I went, okay. So I went down there about a week before, no trains. Mm -hmm. And I see all this stuff everywhere in this huge, empty um, soundstage. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just looks like a junkyard. Mm -hmm. And so I said, so are you guys going to move all this junk out of here to make room for the train? He goes, no, that's the train. <laughs> so what are you talking about? He goes, that's the train. And it's not, it's not a train they took apart. Mm -hmm. It is just flat pieces <laughs> of tin and metal, mm -hmm. flat pieces of, of raw bar steel or anything else. And I said, yeah. what do you mean that's train? He goes, yeah, we're going to build it. <laughs> so you're going to build a train. In a week. He goes, no, no, we don't start building it for three days. He said, you're going to build a train in, in four days? He goes, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. And I went down there the day they started. There must have been 200, maybe 300 workers. Mm -hmm. All of them had their thing to do. Yeah. No power tools whatsoever. 
Mm-hmm. They were bending pipes with this rig they made. The guys just <laughs> grabbing them and bending them to the right thing, making sure they were right and stacking them. Yeah. And in four days, I had a train. And that's, it looked just like the trains that we worked on. That's incredible. That it really is. incredible. Is. Yeah, yeah. God, they they are very, you know, the, the Indians are very uh, industrious. And, you know, once they, yes. yeah, once they actually get their mind to doing something, they will do it. And as you said, in four days, that's pretty damn impressive. It was. The, uh, the construction supervisor was from England and she set up uh, a table toss a table saw so they could cut all these pieces of wood to the lengths they need they just put it in there chop it put it in there chop it and so she set it up for them showed them how to use it and everything else and she came up she goes I give up (laughs) she goes I spent all this money showed them how to use it Mm -hmm. and now I want to show you how they're cutting the wood (laughs) and they had like 20 guys each Mm -hmm. with different pieces of wood mm-hmm. and two guys will take a piece of wood, hand mm-hmm. it to another guy who puts it between his feet <laughs> and he has a handsaw and you get you And that's the mark. When it comes to his feet, <laughs> yeah. that's where it goes. And that's where he cuts. It. Yeah. And then the next piece comes in and he cuts it. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh God. Uh, do it the way they do it. I was going to say, that, yeah. And, and health and safety goes out the window as well. Oh, way out the window. I had welders. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a, we had a, about a three foot deep, pool of water that uh, they had built this structure in that a world spun on well the world quit spinning and so i said we need that world spin and they said well something uh metal broke inside the gears mm-hmm. so we have to weld it i went okay okay this how long is it going to take to drain it and everything else just no no not long the guy walks over there with a 220 welder kicks his sandals off steps in the water and starts welding <laughs> It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, uh, enough to give you a heart attack, seriously. It does give you a heart attack. Uh, oh, my God. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so, yeah, no, a great experience, though. You're de- you know, yeah. it's, it's one that you obviously remember as well. So that's oh, great. yeah, it's a life experience. Yeah, you'll never forget it. Oh, brilliant. Okay. So is that the only Indian film you've done, or are you, gonna, are you planning to do No, I've done other ones. Um, I did, a, I can't even remember the name, or another one over there. It was a shorter time. It was about three months I guess mm. it was a it was their first uh, venture trying to do a uh, cartoon movie, kind of like Roger Rabbit, but mm. with live actors. Right. <laughs> uh, it was called Toon Poor Ka Superhero or something. Right. There's a lot of uh, okay. uh, a lot of little wire work fight scenes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. that's fun. No, yeah, I've done a couple of them over there, and then I've done two or three in LA mm-hmm. uh, and uh, different states that were Indian backed. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. right. So that's what I would say. You know, would you say it's a perk of the job you being able to travel around the world? Oh gosh, yes. One of the one of the best perks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, getting getting to see the the world as it really is mm. and i know you know if you're if you're on vacation you only have limited time mm. and you're you're there for a week maybe you know at the most and you want to see the you know the things that everybody wants to see mm. well in the movie business i'm there for months mm-hmm. and i can see what everybody wants to see but then we get to be taken to places that nobody gets to see mm. i mean i get to do things uh that just nobody gets like like i'm in new york in I don't know, God knows how long it was now, 1980s. Um, we did a, a movie with Christopher Walken, and we had to get Christopher Walken up on top of the Brooklyn Bridge. Mm. So I had to walk him up the pipes of the Brooklyn Bridge. Nobody gets to do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Nobody gets to do that. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, mm-hmm. it's all the stuff that mm. kind of opens doors for you, and you get to see really cool stuff and do really cool stuff that most people don't. Definitely, definitely. So, yeah. so how did how did you actually um, start becoming a stuntman? Because obviously, that's how you started. Then you ended up becoming a stunt coordinator. So, how did you start yeah. in the first place? Uh, I was one of the lucky ones. It's called nepotism. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> um, we I grew up with my brother Jack. Um, Jack's nineteen months older than me, and uh, when we grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, I was I can remember back to you know. 13, 14 years old, Jack was talking about being a stunt guy. And we raced motorcycles and mm-hmm. raced cars and did all that, you know, everything that, uh, you know, Southern kids did. And we were kind of motorheads. And uh, he, I didn't even know what he was talking about, but he used to grab boxes and I had to fold them with him. He'd jump off the roof of the house. Then when we turned 16, we'd take our mom, mom and dad's car out and 
slide around corners. And then uh, somehow I became the guy that had to get hit by the car. So I don't know why he was <laughs> the stunt man that I had to get hit. But we did all that and we put it on, you know, Super 8 and mm. uh, uh, all that stuff. And then, you know, I kind of, you get into after high school or anything else, everybody starts working. Mm. And uh, I started, uh, I graduated high school. Mm. We raced a bit. And then Jack just one day said, I'm, my moving, I'm going out to California, you know, okay. something. Yeah. And I just, uh, I stayed home and I was a bartender and working and just, you know, making, making money and making a, a life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he got in mm -hmm. and about two years later, about no, three years later, he called me up one day and said, what are you doing with your life? And I went, I'm bartending. I've got a three bedroom house to myself, a, Trans Am with T-tops and yeah. loving life. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> and he said, but really, what are you going to do with your life? I said, I don't know, probably own a bar or something. Mm -hmm. He said, get your ass out here and get in the stunt business. You're going to love it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> and I sold everything and moved out about two weeks later. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, trained under him for about a year because mm -hmm. um, he was he was doing, uh, oh, uh, he had been on a Dukes of Hazard for a couple of years, and this new show was starting up when I moved out um, called Night Rider. Oh wow! Uh, I so I went out when I first got out there and watched him shoot the pilot and and did all and you know wasn't in the business yet, but I watched him. And then when it got picked up, it was good. It was a good six or seven months later. Um, I had been going out to sets with him and, and setting his stunts up and watching how they worked. And he would let me set it up and go, okay, this is wrong. This is right. Mm -hmm. This is, would you really want to do it this way? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, okay, well, it would work. But, uh, and so I learned. Mm -hmm. And uh, then Night Rider came around and uh, I was bartending one day and he said, hey, can you get off work tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, I find somebody to do my shift. He says, okay. You're crashing a motorcycle in the kit car and going over the hood and down a sand embankment. I went, <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, you never looked back. Never looked back. That's yeah. what I on. Just kept working. Yeah. I was very lucky. Oh, I love it. Because Night Rider used to be my favorite show when I was a kid growing up. I loved it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah it was yeah, brilliant. I was kit for five years and then, well, yeah, oh. about five years. Mm -hmm. Him and he both did it for a while because he started – uh, second year directing, uh, and so I stepped in after a couple of years of doing mm -hmm. ND car work on, on Night Rider and all that. Then I would just do run bys and in kit, then he would do the slides mm -hmm. and jumps. Then I started doing some of the smaller slides, then I started doing the slides, and he just did the jumps. Then I started jumping him and right. doing blind driving, and just over the years, I just kept moving up and right. Learned. Okay. We got some experience racing motorcycles and car <laughs> racing back in Georgia, but nothing like for camera. Mm -hmm. And so what I learned uh, from him was how to how to uh, hit marks, how to hold marks, um, how to do fight scenes, mm -hmm. you know, for for camera work. I didn't know mm -hmm. um, how to how to take bullet hits and fall down. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd been doing it for two years pretty regularly, so he had learned a lot. Mm -hmm. He was still new in the business, but he had learned a lot. And, uh, so I, I just did anything he told me what to do and especially in cars. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we would go out, find parking lots here and there, and we would, uh, take our cars and he'd make me hit marks and put cones out there and say, okay, you know, don't hit this cone, but slide as close as you can to it. And, you know, over and over and over again. Yeah. And luckily on set, um, I had all these tools to play with yeah. and, Luckily, I wasn't thrown in without having the, the background to at least attempt to, to get what we wanted done. Mm -hmm. And so the way I was brought into it, uh, anything that was over my head, I could easily just say, hey, Jack, I don't know if I can do this. Mm -hmm. So he would jump in yeah. and he'd get it done. Okay. But over the years, my confidence grew. His confidence in me grew. And um, Back then, we were working with a bunch of other guys, young guys my age, that were on other shows, like Tim Gilbert, who did, his dad did Fall Guy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I started jumping around from Night Rider to Fall Guy to Riptide, mm -hmm. and growing as a, as a stunt guy and, and getting a lot of experience. And because I was um, on Night Rider, I just mm -hmm. automatically became known as a driver. Yeah. So every everything I got on, I was driving stuff. Mm 
Okay. Hey, Andy does Night Rider. Put him in the car. Put him in the Night Rider car. Put him in the Fall Guy car. Put him in this car. So, yeah, you know, and it's and it's time behind the wheel. Is mm -hmm. you're better and better. And I was just lucky enough that I had a lot of time behind the wheel. Yeah, and I just got better and better and better, and I just yeah. kept working. Yeah, because because yeah, I've been looking at your work, and yeah, you, the predominantly most of your work is driving. So like, yeah. you know, then that leads to the Fast and the Furious series, and that's yeah. how you got involved with it. And and I have to admit that the first time I saw your work, obviously I didn't realize it was you at the time. But when you um, did the coordination for the Bad Boys Two yeah. uh, film and the the freeway chase, that's the, yeah. one of the best car chases I've ever ever seen in a film. I love it. Yeah, yeah that was a fun one. Yeah. I, I came into that. Um, and it was a big break for me. It was a, uh, we had done other shows with Michael and then his right hand guy, um, Kenny Bates had done, uh, most of his stuff. Well, Kenny and him were like brothers mm. and Kenny wanted to do second year directing and, and Michael just was not going to give up second year to anybody. Michael loves shooting action. He wasn't going to let somebody else shoot it. Mm -hmm. So Kenny ventured out and got a second year directing job on, uh, uh, what it was Italian job I think it was <clears throat> and so that left Michael with no coordinator mm -hmm. so the, he put my name in me and Steve Paterni ended up coordinating together for Michael and so uh, we went in and we started talking about that freeway sequence uh, first day when we go in and, and we, he says okay you guys can coordinate because he had a mm -hmm. Michael likes to know the people that work around and we both worked with him for years and so he's comfortable with us and he said, uh, all right, I got this idea for this chasing and I want to, I want to throw cars off a car carry. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I've had my, I've had my, and this is the first day of it. I've had my, uh, guys put together a previs of it and just to let you see what it is. Well, I'm watching the previs. And at that point, it wasn't the previs wasn't on a bridge. It's just on down a road and he has cars on a car carry. And he has the cars, you're going 60 miles an hour one direction. He has the cars hitting on the ground and then rocketing that, that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's taking out police cars and going <laughs> up and over them and everything. I'm looking at it. It looks really funny to me. Yeah. And he goes, how do you like it? How do you like it? And I just went, it's, <laughs> it's wrong. And he goes, what do you mean it's wrong? What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? I said, well, the cars wouldn't go that way. Mm -hmm. yes they do when they come off they're going to go that way and I said no Michael they're not he goes they're going to hit the ground and, and continue going the direction they're going mm -hmm. he goes no they're not they're, I said yes they are <laughs> I promise you they're gonna it's not anything like that previous it's mm -hmm. going to be cool he goes you're telling me when that hits the ground it's not going to rocket back there and smash those cars I said no the cars behind it will smash it driving into it but that car is not going to rocket back it's still going. I had to sit down and get the toys out mm -hmm. and physically show him, look, if it's going 60 miles an hour this way and it hits the ground, it's going to continue going that way. Mm -hmm. So I have this big argument my first day with him about it. He goes, well, it's going to be a wreck, isn't it? I said, yeah, you can make it as big as a wreck as you want. You can drive those cars into them, whatever you want to do. And he goes, well, you think it'll work? And I said, yeah, it'll work cool. It's, I think it's going to be great. And so we actually went out and uh, – to a abandoned Air Force base and did tests, dropping cars, mm. just because he didn't believe me. <laughs> oh my uh, god! I want to see this because I know you're wrong. I said I'm not wrong. <laughs> I'm telling you. And he stands out there and he watches it and he goes, "Well, I got some." I got some people back at previs I got to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think you do. Yeah. yeah. So how how did you plan that speedboat bit as well then, in the freeway? That you with the with the uh, the engine coming through the yeah yeah front? yeah that was a that was a piece that he wanted that uh, we talked about and uh, we had a uh, I said yeah we can do it we just need to have a specifically built car for it which. Mm. With Michael, that's the easiest thing. When you do a Michael Bay film, that's the easiest thing in the world to get because every, all the producers, everybody knows it's a Michael Bay film. If he wants it, he gets it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I tell him I need something, I get it. Yeah. And that one, we just needed multiple cars to that make a car, and I had to make one with a a, a big steel center plate in it, right. and then being driven from the back. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So we did that, and then FX made a big rig that uh, we could actually have that boat on that we could physically drive that car yeah. into the boat as the boat is coming backwards, so it has a bigger impact. Mm-hmm. So it was just a, it was a sit down and figure it all out and mm-hmm. how we can do this. Well, I, I need this this piece built. I need that piece built. Yep. Put them together, and it, and it works like a charm. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. It was, it, yeah, nice, yeah. nice little. So, how long did that uh, that scene take to to plan and then film? And because I because because I've seen them, you know, I've seen when you've got your car, your toy cars. I take yeah. you carry your toy cars around with you everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. yeah just to plan. Yeah. So, yeah, how long did it take to to plan and the then actually film? The sequence was very quick, actually. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were only on the bridge for five days, right? Okay. That entire sequence, but then we broke away. Uh, Spiro did. That was the first time that Michael ever really let a second unit director direct something. And uh, we did everything we did could on the bridge, and he wanted more time on the bridge to finish it all. Mm-hmm. But it, since it was the causeway that cuts off Star Island and all that, they said, absolutely not. That's all you get. Right. So then Spiro um, picked up other shots, and, and we took a, we went out to a uh, airport in, in Miami, and put up the barrier walls so it looked like uh, the bridge. And we did it like the boat thing we did there, and a lot of little pieces that we weren't able to get on the bridge itself, mm. we picked there and we shot another, I think it was two days of that. So seven days of that to, to get that sequence. Would you say that's your your favorite stunt? You and It's a difficult question, I know, but is, is that yeah. your favorite stunt you've done? Because you've done so many. Or Oh, you- my gosh. Ones that you've performed and coordinated. Gosh, the, my, the ones I performed, I, you know, the the most fun I had was Fast Five because mm-hmm. I uh, Jack kind of that was when I was in you know, I was in uh, 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 India mm-hmm. when it started prepping, mm-hmm. and Spiro and I were both over there, and I tried to talk Spiro out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I knew it was going to be so long. And he said, well, like, we got nothing else coming up. Come on, let's just go have some fun. So we get up there and about two or three months into it, he gets the call for fast five. Mm-hmm. And I went, don't even tell me because yeah, fast five. And I said, well, you got to go. There's no reason they can't not go. Mm-hmm. He goes, yeah, well, you got to go too. And I said, I can't, you can't leave them high and dry for, you know, they put too much time and money into us. We, they don't know anything. Mm-hmm. We put it all together. We designed it. We, you know, everything. Mm-hmm. So I ended up directing a uh, second unit instead of him there and coordinating all that. He went home. Jack took over for me to prep it. Mm-hmm. The idea was Jack was going to prep it until I finished the indie show. And then I was going to come in and take over. And so, uh, like the first week of filming, I missed, but then I finally got back and I went straight from India to uh, Puerto Rico mm-hmm. and, uh, came in and, <laughs> As soon as I got there, Jack says, it, it's all yours. <laughs> you can have it. Uh, him and Spiro just got butt heads. Right. And I went, I, I don't know anything what you guys have done. Mm. I said, I really don't. I'm coming in here blind. You know it all. Just keep coordinating. Mm. He goes, that's your job. And I said, I know, but I, I didn't prep it. I don't, I mm. can't help you. I can't, you know. Mm-hmm. And he goes, okay. And he says, then stick this ball cap on. And he has hands to be a ball cap, just shoves it on my head. He goes, jump in the charger, you're Dom, and you're going to be towing the safe. <laughs> well, all right. Here we go. And I had a ball. Yeah. It was so much fun. Oh. All those chase scenes, mm. towing the a real safe around, slamming into things. And yeah. It was a lot of fun. One of the best perks. <laughs> yeah. uh, getting getting to see the, the world as it really is. Mm. And I know if you're, if you're on vacation, you only have limited time. Mm-hmm. And you're you're there for a week, maybe you know, at the most, and you want to see the you know the things that everybody wants to see. Mm-hmm. Well, in the movie business, I'm there for months, mm-hmm. and I can see what everybody wants to see. But then we get to be taken to places that nobody gets to see. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get to do things uh, that just nobody gets. Like like I'm in New York, and oh, God knows how long it was now, 1980s. Um, we did a, a movie with Christopher Walken, and we had to get Christopher Walken up on top of the Brooklyn Bridge. Mm. So I had to walk him up the pipes of the Brooklyn Bridge. Nobody gets to do that. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. nobody listens to that. But, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's all the stuff that mm-hmm. kind of opens doors for you, and you get to see really cool stuff and do really cool stuff that most people don't. Definitely. Do you always work with your brother now as well? As much as I can. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we, because uh, he's second in directs and coordinates, I, I coordinate second in directs. So a lot of times just the, the cards send us in two different directions. Mm. Like uh, right after this one's done, I believe he's he's up for uh, coordinating Jumanji. Right. Okay. Uh, and I'm up for coordinating uh, Black Panther. So we'll right. split a different, like, two different directions. But mm. <clears throat> if I'm available, I'm always working for him. If he's available, he's always working. So. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And have you ever thought about like wanting to branch out to become a director yourself? Oh, many, many times. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, not the one. I've just been so busy. Mm. Uh, you know, I haven't had time to. Mm. It, it's a weird. It's a weird conundrum. Mm. Uh, with Spear and I've been together thirty, four years. Mm-hmm. I mean, a long time, and um, I have been coordinating for him and we've been climbing the ladder, getting bigger and bigger shows, bigger and bigger shows. Mm. And now I'm in a point that unless I had a lot of background directing, I could never direct a show this big because you just don't have the the background to get you there. Mm. So I'd have to step backwards, go back into TV, go back into low budget stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's a conundrum. It's a, um, I'll get a couple of days here and there on little, Mm. little, stuff on the big shows but nothing big Mm -hmm. do i want to yeah i love what i do because i love really really getting down and dirty with the car work and and figuring out how to practically do all this stuff which Mm -hmm. directing you don't get to do Mm -hmm. it's more about just filming it on with cameras here cameras there which is it's great but you don't really get your hands dirty and Mm-hmm. And really get down in the trenches with the effects guys and, and come up with some really cool shit to do. I mean, that's the fun part to me is, <laughs> hey, this might really work. This is going to be really cool. <laughs> yeah. How, how do you think of your ideas then? Where do you, where do you think, you know, sort of think, oh, hang on, that would be good. Let's just have a speed jo- speedboat crash into a car or something. <laughs> well, you just, uh, there's, it, I think it came from years ago uh, when Spiro and I started. Um, I was lucky enough to have Jack. And I was doing Night Rider Fall Guy right off the bat. Uh, he was uh, uh, came in the business about the same year, <clears throat> and I worked with him on different shows, and we became friends. And but he didn't have the the networking that I did, so he was struggling to to make a living. And uh, he got in back then with uh, straight to uh, VHS video mm. shoots, which are low budget, and people in the in the TV world, movie world, thought, oh, that's you know crap. You don't want to get into that, the low budget world. Uh, you know, stay away from that. And else. Mm. Well, he got in because it was a job. It was a paying job. Mm-hmm. And so, like two shows in, they asked him to coordinate some of them. So he hired me because we were friends and I, I did some driving for him on him and he coordinated. And then, lo and behold, the next show, they said, Hey, can you direct all the action in it? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Right. So then he said, hey, I can't direct and coordinate. Can you coordinate for me? So I'm like, low budget. I, you know, I don't like the low budget. You know, I'm doing TV. I don't want to go backwards. He goes, just, it'll be fun, this, that, and the other. And he goes, I promise you, you know, everybody will get paid and the whole work. I went, okay. So I started doing them. And they were still, this day, the most fun I have ever had. <laughs> right. Because they were pre-sold. Mm. They were made for, I think, a million bucks. And they were pre-sold for two to three million. Mm. So they had already made their money. Yeah. They could care less what product they get. Mm-hmm. They, less. they would just they would just give the production amount of money and say, just go out, go out and make something. Mm-hmm. And the the scripts would be, you know, dialogue, 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 car chase. Mm-hmm. And that's it. <laughs> so you'd have, okay, what do you want to do? All right. And, you know, you start out doing car chases and mm-hmm. hitting trash cans, anything that was cheap that we could hit and everything else, you know. Mm-hmm. And then... Over time, it became, what can we do different? What can we do different? Oh, I haven't done this. Hey, how about a guy on roller skates doing a car hit? How about a, you know, one of them was, how about, uh, you know, I said, you know what? I've never seen a guy doing a full burn driving a car. (laughs) And we talked about it and talked about it, but (laughs) how are you ever going to work that into a film? (laughs) Well, then about a year later, Spiro goes, Andy, we got it. What? I said, he goes, you can do your full fire burn driving a car. I said, what? He goes, maniac cop too. 
He's a, he's a zombie. He can't die. Like, yeah, all right. So we wrote it in and mm -hmm. did it. Yeah, right. But that's right. how it all comes from what can we do that's different? That, how we, you know, something that the audience mm -hmm. hasn't mm -hmm. seen much. And that's what's getting harder and harder. Yep. Yep. Uh, because the audience has seen it all. They've seen, so you have to do variations of things and just kind of break it up and try to come up with different ideas. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of it comes straight from the writer himself. You know, it's written into the script. Like a lot of these fasts, it's written in. And we take it and we. We change a lot of it because a lot of it just doesn't work physically, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we don't want to push it to the to the CGI realm that quickly. Yep. So yep. we'll fight to change it to where we can physically do the parts that we can do, and it's always a fight. It's a, it's you know up and down, and some of them mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a budgetary fight because we can do it physically, but it's going to be very expensive. Not as expensive as the digital part of it, but still it's going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. Like last. Uh, uh, fast seven, fast six, both of them. Fast six with the airplane. Yeah, <clears throat> Antonov. Um, that was all supposed to be completely CG, mm -hmm. and we were just supposed to drive cars down a runway, and they were going to manipulate them all. And so we talked to them and said, you know, anything that we, anything that we interact with, you should build physically. And so we needed the wheels, we needed the the ramp. Um, we didn't need the wings. We didn't need anything else. So Spiro talked him into building a life-size model mm. that ran, that had Antonov wheels on it, uh, an internal bay, a ramp you could go up and all that, because that's what we were dealing with. Mm. And lo and behold, they bit and went, all right, it's going to be expensive. You guys really think you can do this? And we went, yeah, we can do it. <laughs> and then we came up with the – how to bring the cars up and, and ski them like a wheelbarrow because the, the, the cables and all that. And then uh, that one, that right there, that was a airbrained idea I had and actually ended up working. And luckily, we how, how, how long did it take you to plan that shoot? That was probably, gosh, we were planning that one for at least two months, two or three months. Yeah. Yeah. But that whole, that whole bit, with the uh, firing the, the harpoons into the bottom of the wings and all that, that was all written uh, for them to try to pull the airplane down. And they 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 were getting towed, but when they're getting towed, they were just kind of skidding down the down the road. And so I talked to him. I said, "God, it would be so cool. It's up in a wing. If that thing's starting to lift, the car lifts. I mean, that'd be the cool part of it." And so we talked about it. And we talked about effects about how would we do that. Um, could you make a big ram that's up on a pick point? We need to build a high pick point and all this. And it kept coming back to, no, we just, you know, you can't get a pick point strong enough to pick the rear end of a car up going down a, the road that fast. And I said, well, you can do it with a crane. They said, yeah, but the crane can, you know, you can't have a crane moving down a road picking cars up. So I said, well, let's get me a crane we can pick cars up with. Let me just test this. So we bring a cr big old crane out. We set it there, and we put hook the car up to the rear, and we pick it up, drop it, pick it up, and drop it, and just see what action it does. And I said, talk to the crane driver. I said, can you drive forward at you know five miles an hour? He goes, yeah. He says it'll probably let me go maybe eighteen or twenty. And I went, okay, well let's try it. So at five miles an hour, we pulled it forward, and it kind of wobbled around. The driver's in there, kind of steering and going, oh, this is kind of weird. We got it really high till it got up on its nose, and then it flipped around real quick and. He stopped and went, okay, that's kind of cool. That's, you know, I can imagine that at speed. That's going to be pretty violent. So I said, so how fast can you get it going? He goes, I don't know. Let's try. So we tried again. He got it up to like 12, and that's as fast as the computer would let him go. And so we're all, well, that's a bummer. You know, Spiro's going 12 miles an hour. If we're getting it maybe 18, I can make it work, but this is not going to work. So everybody's kind of blowing it off. And I went, I got a really stupid idea. Said, so it's all, the only thing that's keeping us from doing this is the computer. What if we put your crane back on the flat boy that brought it here, drive the flat boy down the street? Can you still operate your your arm? He goes, Yeah, it wouldn't know I'm moving. I said, So we can go as fast as we want. He goes, Yeah. 
what are you thinking? I said, I want you to load it up and I want to drive that tractor trailer down the road with your crane arm out and pick that car up. That's how fast I said, 40. And he goes, let's give it a shot. And it worked and it was violent and it was cool. And it's like, wow. That yeah, and and then you know, so when you suddenly see that stunt, you're you're thinking, hang on, that actually did work. I thought of it, and then it's actually come out pretty well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a cool feeling because you know, thinking all through, everybody thinks you're nuts. You're not going to really do that, are you? And I'm like, yeah, it works. Hey, why not? Yeah, yeah. So, do you work with a you know certain uh, the same team all the time? Because obviously, that trust that you need to have to actually say, you know, trust me on this. I know what I'm doing. Uh, so you, yeah. We do. As far as uh, Spear and I try to work together, uh, like I said, we've been together thirty something years. All the time, we well, there are certain special effects leads that we love to work with. You don't get to work with them all the time, um, so you have to you have to kind of learn each other if you get a, a new set of effects guys we try to get the effects guys that we like on the shows but a lot of times they're busy on other shows or you know it's just not going to work out um yeah every the beauty about fast series is it has become a a team and it's become a family everybody you know the, you know the the art department you know the construction department you know effects department and they all contribute greatly to what we do um um our department even more so than anybody else because we're always blowing through all the stuff they're building. You know, I got to blow through buildings, blow through trees, whatever it is. They got to build it and, and make it look good. And uh, because you have a, a, a history with them and you know each other, it's much easier to come to a what is needed on the set, how it should look. Like on uh, with uh, Brian Stoltz on, on the, the Fast Series. I know... I don't have to go to detail with what I need on the set when we, when we discuss something uh, because he's going to go way beyond what I could ever even imagine as the set being or as the trees or whatever he's building. Um, and he will always come to me with, with the pertinent questions about, Hey, do I need to build this breakaway? How much of it do you think you're going to hit? So that makes it easier that I can concentrate on my stuff, knowing that he is going to be there for me, backing me up saying, Hey, you know, I think you might need this. Uh, you know, than me thinking, all right, I need to tell him every little detail about what needs to be built, what needs to be fake, what needs to be real. And it's just, you don't have to, because you know him. Now, if it was a new one, I would have to go in and go, okay, this is what we're doing. Cars are coming all through here. This piece needs to be breakaway. This piece doesn't. This I don't need the roof, uh, but it's it makes it so much easier. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, so what other stunts can you do? Because obviously, you know, you specialize in the car stunts. Are there any others? You said about setting, uh, being on fire as well. Oh yeah. Well, I, back in back when I was doing stunts, I did I, I did high falls, I did fight scenes, firework, car work, motorcycles. I kind of really got in on motorcycles. First thing I ever did was a motorcycle stunt. Um, um, I did motor. I was known as motorcycle guy. Uh, one of the probably. The most dangerous stunts I ever did did was a motorcycle jump um, on Riptide. I jumped a motorcycle over. A, there was a flatbed supposedly carrying lumber, and the lumber came out and as it came to a stop, made a ramp. And so it's a flatbed truck uh, stopped, and in front of it was a, a crossing semi <clears throat> with a trailer, and then in front of that was an ambulance. And the ambulance was going away from me. So as I hit the ramp, they counted it down. As I hit the ramp, the ambulance would hit the gas. And I went over the flatbed, over the semi, over the ambulance, moving under me and landing in front of me. My God, right. I ramped the ground. So it was my end of my motorcycle ramp back then was a big jump. It was nine and a half feet tall. So I ended up going about 15, 16 feet up and uh, 120 feet long. Oh, all right. Okay. How many times did you have to do that? Did you, hopefully it was two, just two. once. Two times. Uh, yeah, yeah. Landed the first time and ovaled the back wheel, flattened the rim. <clears throat> and uh, they put a new one on it. And, uh, I had a friend of mine, Richard Epper, uh, take the rebound out of the shock. Second jump was piece of cake. I'd already done it once and everything worked. We had we had a lot of protocol. You know, we had cones 
uh, set up that if the ambulance didn't didn't see me in front of him by a certain cone, then he just stopped, um, which gave me plenty of distance. To we knew he'd make that cone easy. So okay, right, yeah. wow, okay. No, I, I just that, that's the thing I admire you guys so much that you want to risk, you know, you risk your life and limb to actually put on this amazing show for these people. Yeah, to- you don't you don't think about it when you're doing it that way. You don't think about your risking because you're. In your mind, you know you can do it. I mean, that's the at least you think you can do it. But it, it, you know, there's a lot of those kind of things didn't bother me as a stun guy as much as the the explosions and the everything else because that's out of your hands. You know, it's a timing thing. You're running through a big explosion. You just hope the effects guys timed it right. Yeah, yeah, and that's that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So it's very much like mind over matter then. Yeah. Yeah, you have to trust uh, all the rigging that I did for years. So you just you just learn to trust your rigging, and so you can perform. Like when you get thrown off a building on on the rock, I was doubling. Uh, uh, what's his name? I can't remember the actor's Sean name. Connery. No, Sean threw this guy off the the side of a the hotel, and so I had to double him. And, uh, I was on a, back then it's on a wire. You don't, you don't have a airbag below you or anything else. And you just got to trust it and go and get into your acting and everything else and not worry about the rigging. That's something you just, you just learn over time that, okay, I got to trust this is going to work. And you, you've tested it. You've done everything you can and you go, you just do it. You don't even think twice about it. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously health and safety has improved throughout the years as well now as well. So. Yes, it has. It's, it's kind of a double edged sword. It's, it's improved greatly, but also the stunts have gotten a lot bigger, a lot more dangerous. So it's kind of going along. It's a good thing that it has improved that way. Um, but again, we're doing a lot bigger things, uh, than we used to do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Nice one. Well, thank you very much for the chat, Andy. I really do appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for getting in touch with me. Thanks. No worries. And I was going to say, if, if, if people want to know more about you and your work, how can people find out more about you? Oh, gosh. I'm not a very good self <laughs> Um I guess just IMDb. Mm. Um, that's really the only thing I'm on, really. Yeah. I just, okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't have any books. I don't have any. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, no, I fair just enough. Like to do, the, do the job and... Yeah. and yeah. Have fun at home. Okay. Well, there you go. What can I say? Andy Gill and some of the films that he's performed the stunts in, the car chases are just mind blowing. I could just watch those films just for the car chases time and time again. They're just mind blowing. Mind blowing. Anyway, that's enough for me for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed yourself watching that video. There will be plenty more to come. Uh, if you haven't seen any already, they will be on the website www.stuntlives.com. Uh, and on YouTube, so check it out. So I will bid you farewell. Take care. Speak to you soon.